Welcome to the Creative Agency Success Show, the go-to resource for agency owners looking to scale their business. Join us every week to stay ahead of the curve and position your agency for future success. All right, Jody, we just got done talking to Adam. Uh, that was a fun episode. It's always fun when it goes a little longer and I don't even realize it. And I'm like looking down at the time, like, oh, we've gone for, we've gone for almost 45 minutes here, but that was, that was a fun episode. Although I did make a crucial mistake by uh, mispronouncing his company. You know how paranoid I am about mispronouncing names. Then there I go and mispronounce uh, Adam's company. So yeah, that's okay, Jamie. I, I did not mispronounce his company. So I didn't actually even pronounce his company. So that 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 kind of gives you that. No, Adam, Adam's been a great friend. I've known him. I think we met originally about three or four years ago at the Bureau Digital. And then uh, from there, um, you know, it's kind of fun to see how he's uh, gone from uh, where he's at to, you know, joining a, a giant company being uh, basically head of uh, the business development. And, and, and we're talking about uh, a wide, wide range of uh, salespeople underneath them. So it's, it's kind of neat to, to see that. And, and the conversation was pretty cool. I mean, uh, Adam's a down to earth guy and you'll like him a lot uh, for sure. And then of course the, the topics at the end are always fun to, fun to listen to. Yeah, definitely. And I think a lot of times as I was listening to the stuff Adam was saying, I was like, oh yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. And so I think it's very practical and logical stuff, but I think a lot of times you just forget to do the basics. And I think that's really a lot of what we talked about. So anyone that is looking for biz dev struggling right now, trying to get those sales, I think this will be a really good podcast and definitely worth a listen. Yeah. And I think it's not only just for the creative agencies out there, but really any kind of professional service company. I was picking up little tidbits even for what we, what we do. And, uh, you know, I give a sales presentation here in a couple of weeks to a bunch of CPA firms, and there's going to be little little items here and there that I'm going to probably insert into my uh, my talk. So, a uh, lot of great a uh, lot of great ideas, and uh, you know, it, it, like I said, probably one of our better uh, conversations this year. Definitely. Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's show. Very excited about today's guest because I was just hanging out with him last week in uh, in New York City, and it was a great time. And I know he's going to bring a, a lot of great information to this uh, to this podcast. And um, so we're joined by Adam Kurzawa from Infinium, as well as uh, Jody Grundin, as always. So um, welcome to the show, Adam. Why don't you just start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and a little bit of your background and get the show started? Sure thing. And no worries, because it happens all the time. It's Infinium, not Infinium, oh, which is okay. totally fine because there is an Infinium. It is just not us. <laughs> um, well, and, uh, I, I saw I saw you last week at the the Mirror and AI conference, and I laughed. I walked in, and they had my my pass had the other company's name on it. Oh no way! Seriously, <laughs> it just is what it is. I mean, it's we're talking about one vowel. <laughs> um, yeah, so you know, I lead uh, business development for North America here at Infinium. Um, Jody may remember me from a, yep. a previous life at Expand yep. the Room. Uh, mm -hmm. Our team was acquired by Infinum last year, okay. a little over a year ago at this point. So really the charge has been kind of, you know, matching those teams together, really leveraging the strengths of, of everything from the EU team and the US. And we're really trying to, you know, grow this thing in a substantial way here in North America. Awesome. Yeah. And I, I apologize for mispronouncing it. I actually, the, um, one of the companies I worked for it's had a good. software called Infinium. So that 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 was the um, I'm yeah. used to saying Infinium, and I did remember seeing your name tag last week and seeing it with extra eye in there. So yeah, that, that threw me off. So I apologize. You weren't wrong. You technically <laughs> weren't wrong. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So the topic that we want to talk about today with you is is one that is pressing, and I think you'll be a good person to talk about this. And we've had a lot of conversations about um, pipeline and biz dev and what we can do to really build it up. I think um, we talked about it. We had our quarterly meeting with the CFOs a couple of days ago and to, to kind of talk about what we saw in the third quarter and what to tell our clients. And And it's just still going slower than people want. And mm -hmm. so I think um, we're really looking for ways to pick it up, what you can do, some of that low hanging fruit. So that's kind of going to be the topic today. And I know um, both of you are really good in that area. So I think we're going to have a really good conversation. So Adam, why don't you just start us off with some of that low hanging fruit? What are the things we can do um, to yeah. help um, build our pipeline up and some biz dev stuff? Yeah, I think, you know, look, there's if you've already got kind of a good cadence with your your marketing practice that you've got at your organization, whether it's writing blog posts, doing podcasts like this, being being out there, doing events, that kind of thing, like keep doing all that stuff. Right. Like nobody's telling you not to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what we're seeing and what I'm hearing from other agencies, both from founders and from heads of biz dev, is that where the work is coming from now is not net new clients or net new projects from those clients. It's really existing clients doing either an upsell or an extension of an existing project. Or if you're lucky, you're getting some good referral, like inbound type stuff that's happening. So I think like the, the first thing I would do is really double down on 
really over delivering to those existing clients and being in their face. If you're not in their market, you're not in their city, you got to go see them in Q4 and get in person, figure out what they've got going on for the new year, figure out if there's anyone else in the org that you can expand into like a different line of business. I think of like our financial services clients, great places to go visit someone and be like, Hey, by the way, you know, we're in X department. We're not really doing anything with these four other places. There's somebody you think I should be talking to and, and try to foster that. They're also going to be great sources of referrals, right? Those people know your work. They trust you with the brand. They hire you over and over again. If you're going to get lucky on a referral, that's the place. Where I continue to see agency struggle and it, you know, it, it, it comes down to kind of just you know, fear and being out of the comfort zone mm-hmm. is really genuine outbound on the sales front. Um, and, and I think about that as you know, when I think about sales, it's really nurturing relationships and manufacturing opportunities. Like that is your job all day, every day. And I don't care how you do it, but that's what, that's what you got to be delivering for your mm-hmm. agency. So you know, typically, I, well, the way I like to tell people to do it is to start with people that have given you money before. Mm-hmm. That could be a client that hired you three years ago that you're no longer working with. Maybe they went somewhere else. Talk to your team. Like right now is a great opportunity for us, for example. Like we've got a North American team, but I've now got 350 colleagues in the EU. Who have they worked with? What companies have they worked with? Did alumni from the company go work somewhere else? Like that's mm-hmm. the best in ever. Like they, they mm-hmm. know everything about that really diving down into that. And then there are like second and third levels of those kinds of things where you can look at alumni of, of, you know, people you went to school with, you know, like me, I've got kids. I mean, for years you're at PTA meetings, you're at school fundraisers, like talk to the dads, like what are people doing? Like, you know, their odds are they're going to need something um, that, that you're working on. And if nothing else, you're just building those relationships and maybe somebody makes a referral. But I think that outbound thing is something people need to be doing like right now, because like as inflation comes down, the Fed just cut the rate. We'll see mm-hmm. if that case continues. We really feel like budgets have been committed in Q4. Mm-hmm. It's probably likely that Q1 is is fairly well fleshed out for most clients. But Q2 is like the opportunity. So if you're thinking that that that's your kind of your horizon you got to be doing that work now to be on their for, on their on their mind and at the forefront of their decision making process. So, so you're, you're I mean, so kind of kind of getting back then. We, we've got. Uh, I was just at an, I was just at a, a conference and they said about fifty percent of the agencies are seeing a positive outlook for next year, mm-hmm. a positive outlook for fourth quarter. Fifty percent are saying the opposite. So yeah. it's kind of like it, it's it's one of those things we don't we don't really know. And, and you're right with the Fed cuts. Hopefully that that sparks things. You did talk, touch base on outbound marketing. Um, how, how you know, and you and you talked about, hey, let's go, to, let's go to our existing team, find out alumni. I love that idea a lot. What other ways of outbound marketing are you seeing uh, in, in, impactful? I mean, it can't be just simply knocking on doors, or maybe it is. So, what, what's your thought on that? Yeah, I, you know, it, I, I'll, I'll kind of just subtract the word marketing from that because I, mm-hmm. I think it's more, it's a little bit more hand to hand tactical than that. So, mm-hmm. the other thing that I, I think works really well, and again, it, it, it all varies on the size of your team and how much time you can devote to it. Because um, I always caveat any outbound discussion with you can't ignore like the inbound and the current clients and the right. referral, right? This mm-hmm. stuff has to be additive, it can't take away from that other stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the key things you can do is if if you're targeting uh, a vertical, certain types of companies, that kind of thing, what I'll typically do is, you know, let's say I'm targeting a company like Anders CPA, for example, Yep. Um, you know, I would look that company up and then start looking for two key things. I'll look at titles, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, head of product, um, head of design, um, you know, IT, technology lead, CTO, that kind of thing. I'll Mm -hmm. kind of bucket a couple of those LinkedIn profiles for research later. Mm -hmm. The other part I'll look at is who am I connected to at the organization? Um, Oh, wow, I'm connected to this guy, Jody. He's fairly senior. I know him through X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of make a little bit of a matrix of, okay, like what is my best chance of getting that first in conversation? Is it the referral route? And if it is, I take all the work off of my friend who's going to make the referral. Like I write the note. What do I want to get out of meeting with Jody? How do I think I can add value? Why should he waste his time talking to me for 10 minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Give them that note. Ask them if they're willing to make the referral. Send them on their way. 
if it's more of the title route, you got to do some homework. Mm -hmm. You got to figure out something a little bit more personal about them. Um, maybe, you know, and again, you know, you don't want to get too stalkerish, but if they have public social media and they're, mm -hmm. they're posting things that are interesting, maybe you find a mutual connection of, of like a, a hobby for me, it would be running music, you know, kid stuff, you name it, yep. mm -hmm. you find some kind of common ground. And, and you also try to figure out, are they doing the conference circuit? Mm -hmm. like, they come into your city, like mm -hmm. get coffee, meet them in person. Um, the other piece outside of that is. You know, I, I always talk about, you know, manufacturing meetings. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, good case in point is, you know, we are doing a client only event in Chicago uh, at the end of this month. Mm -hmm. We've got a New York Times uh, bestselling author named Rich Cohen, who is going to be doing a fun talk about what business development and companies can learn from the Beatles versus the Rolling Stones. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. cool, fun, have some drink, have some food, bring some people in, have a great Q&A, right? Mm -hmm. So doing memorable things in market that people can come to and get to meet you, mm -hmm. wonderful. Um, Jamie, I know I saw you last week in, in New York at the conference. Uh, you know, it was, it was ad week and uh, one of the publications did like an invite only dinner with one of their financial services client. I wound up getting an invite. It was magical, right? Like you're sitting there, you're breaking bread with people, you're having a conversation. Mm -hmm. In that instance, they were leading it around like data and analytics and just like a really healthy conversation, you get to know the people in the room. By the end of it, you've got 10 new friends mm -hmm. and, you know, and we're all doing different things and we can all help each other. Mm -hmm. So I think those are, you know, I think, you know, targeting companies one on one, mm -hmm. doing something really memorable in a market where people can attend and then really figuring out how you can stack meetings around you being in that market mm -hmm. is super key. Yeah, I love I love what you're talking about. I, it's funny, Jody and I were in a, a conference the week a couple of weeks ago, and we were kind of comparing our emails. <clears throat> and right now, all the marketing junk emails we get mm -hmm. are like driving us nuts. I'm like, look, here's like 12 I've got this morning from people I have no clue, and they're just like phishing emails, and those are getting so annoying. So like, yeah. I love the suggestions you just yeah. came up with because they're more personalized and they're more specific, and they're gonna like weed through that area where people just aren't paying attention to it, and they're automatically just swiping and deleting. So I think that was that's really good tips. Um, I want to jump back to some of the, the thing you said first is about um, going after your own clients. You know, one mm -hmm. of the things that we've talked about in the past here is, is what I call the white paper report, where you list all your services across the top, lift all your clients on the bottom, and you kind of like put X's in there for the things you are doing, and right. then try to attack the things that you aren't doing, which is the white space. As you were talking, I kind of realized that, you know, in your space, it's a little bit different because you might be working with a company that has 12 different departments. So maybe yeah. you have one of those for each company, and you have all the departments across the top, all your services down the left, and then kind of put X's in there for the things you are doing and then try to get introductions to those departments you're not working with. Now, I think there might be some research that's needed to do that because you want to make sure you understand all the departments. So can you talk a little bit about that and understanding your current clients and understanding like where that white space actually exists? Yeah, it, it's interesting. Mean, I love what you just described. It's like, a, it's like an opportunity matrix with your right. existing clients. Like, like where can I get in and offer more, more value? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a really great example. I mean, we've got one client we've been with for six or seven years and, and it's interesting because it, it started out as as web development work. Mm -hmm. And then they just had, I mean, they do some, and they're part of the marketing group. So they do a lot of events uh, inside their vertical. They need quick turn on things. So we became a go-to resource for like presentation development, you know, PowerPoint decks, mm -hmm. video production, you name it. Mm -hmm. And then when they would introduce us to other people in other groups, it was like, no, 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 time out, really. We do all that stuff, but that's not our specialty. Right. <laughs> like, don't lead with video and like PowerPoints. Like we do mm -hmm. so much more. We, we build products and apps and B2B portals and all this great stuff. So yeah, it, it, it's hard to do that research. I think you, you it, would, it, would, it would really benefit you to have someone on the client side that you trust that's an advocate or a champion. Mm, for you. Good point. you could you know, maybe, bring, maybe go, hey, can we get lunch? I don't want to talk about anything we're working on with you. But I have some questions about like stuff in the org and just level set with them. Hey, if I go to X, Y, and Z departments, like, do they do all this stuff internally? Do they already have vendors that they've got booked for next year? And I shouldn't even like bark up that tree. Um, and, and, you know, if you've got an advocate and a champion, I mean, look, it's no different than an RFP, right? Mm -hmm. If you get invited and you don't have that person on the inside, that's giving you the info. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, you're the other two. You're not yeah. the one. You're gonna, <laughs> exactly. Right? It, exactly. It, it's just, the math is against you. Yep. Um, and I think when you get in, and, and, and that's where I think, you know, agencies talk a lot about what, what role does biz dev play after the sale? And you've got 
some agencies that have account management or client management, and maybe the project manager does some of that. I still think biz dev has to kind of keep their fangs in there a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, You got to build those, like those key relationships, the people that are going to give you the hat tip. You know what? Like I'm hearing that there's an agency that's working with these other guys and I think they're on their way out this year. And you know what, if you're going to throw your hat in the ring, Mm -hmm. do it now. I mean, we got an RFP from a, a sports, um, a company that um, I'm trying to figure out how to say it without giving away who it is. Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I knew nothing about it. I had a former client at a similar company reach out two months ago, go, Hey, did you guys see this? They listed this publicly. Like it's perfect for you guys. Um, and I wrote to the company said, Hey, so-and-so from your competitor in this other state um, <laughs> said, you know, we would be good for this. Like, is it still open? And they were like, absolutely. Like, come on in. Glad you've done work with them. So mm-hmm. like, you know, Again, it's it's just having you want eyes and ears everywhere. <laughs> oh, sure, for sure, yeah, hundred percent. Got got a question for you. So it sounds like we're looking at a you know in, in the business development position. It sounds like we're looking for a specific type of person to being doing that that face of your organization. And and we're currently looking for oddly we're currently looking for a, a strategic growth director right now. <laughs> For those companies out there that are in the same position, what should we be looking for? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and I think every situation is a little unique, right? Because mm-hmm. we, we've all seen organizations where it's like founder-led sales. Yep. Um, and in that situation, you definitely need a very specific skill set from your business development person to mm-hmm. really kind of augment what, what the founder might already be doing. If you're looking for someone with, with growth, I mean, I think there's a couple things there. That person hopefully has done this role somewhere before. Yep. I've seen a couple things. Like, I don't think this is a, I've done biz dev for five years and now I'm the head of growth. Right. Um, I think it's someone that's, you know, hopefully worked outside of the industry and done something in like sales, business, de- uh, biz dev marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then has also practically done it where you guys need it. Um, mm-hmm. They should have some kind of a network, right? They, you know, it, and I, to me, that's, this, we, we talk about this even when we try to hire for biz dev. Yeah. You could teach some, like in our instance, we can teach someone like what we sell, right? Mm-hmm. Visual design, UX, development, yep. quality assurance, all of that. Soft skills, really hard to teach, right? Yep. You either know how to listen and actively engage in a conversation and add value, um, or you're going to have to really shadow someone for a very long time to pick that stuff up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it, it does get harder and harder. I, and I, it, you know, definitely not a slight at, at any particular generation or, or mm-hmm. demographic. Yep. Um, folks that are coming up now, different ways of communicating, right? Like they're used to the phone being like a, a face-to-face kind of thing versus mm-hmm. having a phone call. Right. Um, Which is kind of funny. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think we're a lot closer in age than yep, I am yep. most Gen Z. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. You know, I mean, my, one of my first jobs working in music was I called radio stations and got people to play records. Mm-hmm. So I would call and make phone calls. All What's day. a record? Exactly. <laughs> like, what is a record? <laughs> in layman's terms, Adam. MP3, not even an MP3. It's a stream. Yeah. You mean TikTok? Do you mean TikTok? <laughs> but yeah, I would call them and one of two things would happen. I'd get them on the phone, which is really weird. Like you're just cold calling a person's house. Or their, or their place of business and saying, hey, I sent you so-and-so record. You guys played it last week. Are you willing to chart it? Da, 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 what's going on? You're building okay. a relationship there. Or yep. you've got to master the art of the 59-second voicemail. No. 59 seconds. Okay. You're real good about capturing everything with a call to action and then getting the hell off the phone. Okay. Because right? nobody's listening to more than that. Yep. This generation, like that, that's a foreign concept. So like, how do we translate it into what they're really strong at? Um, and also kind of foster them learning like some of those more soft skills. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's somebody uh, in the bureau um, that, I, that I've known for years was like, when we look at biz dev people, we look for people that have waited tables. Like if you've waited tables mm-hmm. or a bartender, you, you can, or a bartender, right? Yeah. You, you, you're good at listening. Like you might not hear everything, but you pick up on visual cues. Like you see when someone's pissed that you didn't get to them quick enough. All those things are like well-rounded soft skills that people need in biz dev. Mm-hmm. For your growth position, though, that person's going to have those soft skills. I guarantee it. Hundred yeah. percent, they have to. Yeah. You should have a network, and they've got to have some experience, like showing that they've been able to really hit your K- like the KPIs of the places they've come from mm-hmm. to really drive demonstrative growth. Like it, mm-hmm. it can't just be, oh, I think I could do it. 
Mm-hmm. You know, there's got to be some some real you know meat meat on paper. Right, right. It makes it makes a ton of sense. And, and when we think about it, it's it's one of those things. Do we hire somebody that is a good salesperson? Mm-hmm. That has a great marketing background because really with marketing and, and strategic growth, you have to have a good marketing background. You've got to have a good sales. Or do we hire somebody that's industry agnostic, or industry agnostic, or do we hire somebody that is industry focused? You know, so you know yeah. what, what exactly? You know, which exactly is it first? You know, if your if your vertical is dentist, do we hire somebody that has experience in dentistry? Or don't don't we care about that? You know, because because that person with that marketing and and sales background is going to trump that. What, what's your thought on that? Because we keep tossing it back and forth, and we've done both. We've hired a salesperson at a lower level, not 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 the senior director growth, but at, at a lower level, thinking you know, hey, this person would be awesome, and found found out eh, not 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 so much so. Couldn't communicate, couldn't talk the talk, and then we've hired people or, or brought our CFOs in. And, and we found that, hey, they, they've been extremely good, but maybe not great at the closing of the deal. What, what, what's your thought? What's your thought on that? Yeah, I, th- I think it, it, in some instances, it, the right move could be two complementary people, right? Mm-hmm. Someone that's yeah. more of the, the hunter gatherer that has the network that's just good in front of the client. Mm-hmm. And then someone who's more of a facilitator for the paperwork in the process. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, you guys know this just from hiring, like forget about biz dev, marketing, sales, growth, like hiring, period. You got to mm-hmm. figure out how long your leash is on people too, right? True. And, and sales is real tricky yeah. because you know you 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 can you could fire a little too early, and that person might have been on the cusp of turning a corner. Mm-hmm. You could also let that go way too long, and you're just like bleeding money, and they're not delivering on results, and they're just not getting it. So it's I think you know having regular checkpoints with that person, um, biweekly, monthly check ins. If there's some way to look at like funnel activity that you can really extrapolate like, okay, like how are they trending? Like how are these conversations going in the beginning? It's really squishy because it's, it's like, I'm having a bunch of conversations. Mm-hmm. Maybe they're assigning a percentage of how real something feels. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the sooner you can get that down to like, a, like, like more fidelity of this is real and we're closing mm-hmm. things. Great. Once they got some momentum, you're good to go. I mean, we, we thought about that. We went through a, positioning exercise uh, mm-hmm. ironically right before the pandemic which was like and then you know and then uh, the world shuts down and it's like okay yeah. well we're going to come back to positioning right now we're going to grab all of the work we can possibly grab whatever yeah, exactly. that. <laughs> well we talked about that because you know we, we we've certainly done like for example a, a bunch of work in the healthcare space mm-hmm. and there's a certain ceiling where we were coming up on rfps and we knew we were competing with people that had doctors and board members on their agency staff Mm -hmm. and that's a whole other level like like your dentist example yeah if you're really going to focus on that at some point you're going to get to a tipping point where your team having a good knowledge of the vertical is one thing Mm -hmm. and can they execute a project sure but that client like if they ask one question and you don't know the right acronym or you don't know the compliance (laughs) standard you're out the vernacular is super important they can't coach you they can't coach you on the fly right? right they're not paying for that Yep, no, no, definitely. I think it's yeah. It's a. I always say it's really hard to hire a marketing or biz dev person because they're really good at sales, and that's all an interview is, right? Is all I'm doing is selling you on myself. So like, it's really hard. Like, how often like you interview ten salespeople and all of them are good because they're all like really good at selling themselves. So yeah. I think that that's always a struggle. So um, <laughs> earlier you mentioned the the fifty nine second voicemail. I, I think that was a a cool tip because it's easy to think about, easy to remember, and I always think like yeah, the fifty nine seconds is important, but also what's really important is that first ten seconds. Like. I always yeah. think about me and the podcast, like the second the podcast starts, my voice changes, right? And you can tell the sales voice on the on the voicemail where I'm like, oh, yeah. this is a sale. I'm just swiping. I'm deleting <laughs> it. So um, any other quick tips like that before we start uh, thinking about our fun question for the day? I'm just curious. And, and I would say the 59 seconds, probably 29 seconds. Now. Yeah, it's, it's too long. 59 is too long, right? Like if, you, if you get 59, you're done, yeah. right? You can do 30. Great. Like a hot 30. Yep. Hot 30 uh, sounds good. Yep. Yeah. And you're thinking about it like a stand-up comedian, like. You've got a certain amount of time. Like if you haven't captured that audience, you might as well just walk off the stage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think, Jamie, to that point, I think, I think you know, if we think about it like a 30, 59 second email like, or a phone call, like whatever it is, that first five to 10 seconds is everything, right? So mm-hmm. like your intro, who the hell you are, why am I calling you? Right? Yep. Like, and, and, and the more personal you can do it in the first like sentence, great. 
hey, you know, you know, reaching out, you know, I saw you just ran the marathon last year. I've done it three times. It's totally bananas. Definitely want to talk to you about that. Reaching out because I saw X, Y, and Z. I'm going to be at this conference next week. Hope you're going to be there. Would love to get coffee. I'm going to follow up with an email. Here's my number. If you want to ring me back, I'll shoot you an email after. Hope to see you there. That was crappy, but you get the gist. Mm -hmm. It's it's the connection. I think that's that's the part that I, I like to hear is because I agree. Like if I'm calling you and be like, hey, Adam, it's Jamie. I was talking to Jody about you the other week. That's much better than, yeah. hey, Adam, this is Jamie from Summit CPA. I'm calling to see what you're using for your bookkeeping. Like it's just there's <laughs> two different voices there when you when you listen to those where, messages. Totally. And that's where what I said earlier is so important, right? If, if you find out through your LinkedIn research that I'm connected to Jody through so-and-so, Mm -hmm. You drop that name right away. Like it yep. just, you know, I, I think people don't, they're just uncomfortable asking for referrals or getting people to make a referral, but you don't realize like you're, you're basically vetted by osmosis at that point mm -hmm. by nature of they know and trust who's referring you. And that just elevates the conversation to a point like, okay, you don't have to do all this table stakes, like, like prove that I'm worth your time. They're like, oh, you know, Jamie sent me to Jody. Oh, oh Jamie sent Adam to Jody. I'll, t I'll take a call with him. Okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, Jamie, how do you know him? Oh, cool. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll take that call. And then the conversation can be on a business level. It can be, you know, supremely yep. focused, like all those things. And you're, you're removing all, I always say like the sooner you can get a lead from like ice cold to like piping hot, if you can get it somewhere in the middle, you're in much better shape. Mm -hmm. yeah. but like cold call, like when people say they cold call, I'm like, why are you doing that? That is, unless you're in SAS, it's horrific. I, I, you should never ever cold brutal. call anybody. Yeah, I've done it for. I did it for three years. It's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. <laughs> it's brutal. It it's brutal. You're afraid of the phone. You become afraid of the phone pretty quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh damn, that thing is mean. <laughs> and it probably came through in your calls, right? Like you start to get. I mean, I remember from doing mm -hmm. the, the radio phone calls. Yep. You get robotic, and, yeah. and when you get robotic, people pick up on it. And especially mm -hmm. now in the world of AI, like if you sound like an AI, <laughs> yeah, click, <laughs> yeah, gone. <laughs> well, and especially like because I think a lot of them are told like don't take no for an answer. So when people don't take no for an answer, what I usually end up doing is just hanging up on the person, which I yeah. feel rude about. But it's like I'm sure I'm not the only one. It's like okay, I already told you that mm -hmm. we already have. I'm we're we're a distributed company. We don't have an office building, so we don't need new windows. I already that was my answer. But you're still <laughs> trying to sell me. It's like what am I supposed to do? I'm just gonna hang up on you. You know, like it just doesn't make sense. The, some of these sales strategies so and I, and I know what i'm up against too because like my my cell phone will ring all day with numbers i don't recognize and, and right. i don't answer them but what i love is like like apple for example i open the voicemail thing it gives me a little write-up of what someone said i read it it's like hey adam you've been improved you've been approved for a seventy-two thousand dollar home loan yeah no that's not real <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> hey adam i think this is your number i'm such and such client some someone told me calling you right back Right. right. You know, yep. like that's, you know, it's, it's just so, so easy. Yep, definitely. You actually keep your voicemail turned on. I, I, I freaking filled that thing up <laughs> where nobody yeah, keeps your I voicemail. Keep it, I'm, I'm, I keep my voicemail on too. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an <laughs> inbox zero voicemail box clean kind of guy. Oh, I'm completely full. You can't leave one. <laughs> text <Yeah>. me <laughs> and I'll get back with you. <laughs> well, I'm happy you mentioned text. Like that, that's one other thing that I, I you know, I, I try to do as much as possible and I share it with our team. Like the sooner you can get somebody out of LinkedIn into an email inbox, great. Mm -hmm. If you can get them on text or WhatsApp oh. or Instagram yeah. direct message, it's be better. It's gold. Yeah, yep. it's gold. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent. And if you and if you can and if you can kind of leave the conversation just personal too. Yeah, which is yeah. great too. And then talk you know, maybe a month from now, then lead more into business. That's even sure. better. Or let them ask, right? Yeah. Like you know, I think I you know it, it, it's it's really hard when you're in sales not to force it. I know, I know. <laughs> we all have numbers. We got to hit numbers, right? Yep. But like, you know, I've got people I've been talking to three to five years. I, I, I you know, I, I, I said to someone the other day, I was, I was talking to someone and they're like, how do you like, how do you not go into like friend territory with like, you talk to these people forever. I'm like, look, I've got people that I started out thinking we were going to do work that have become friends. We've never worked yeah. together. Same here. Yeah. And then I've got friends that I've had for years that I kind of didn't want to like push them on anything. And I was like, mm -hmm. And then you just mentioned like, you know, if, if you need help with that, like I can, and then they become a client and mm -hmm. you just, you keep the line clean. It's like, look, I don't want to ruin our friendship. If this is going to be a deal breaker, let's not even have the conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, right. But the other way is funny. Like I've got people we worked with for years that we haven't worked with now for several years. Mm -hmm. Like I go to hockey games with and you know, oh, yeah. 
100 like yeah 100 you know? percent. yeah it's yeah. kind of funny you say that because we I, that exact same thing happened where again not a friend we we we, we eventually became a client yeah basically we tax back and forth he, 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 about his marriage about whatever he, i'm part of his wedding in a, in a couple of weeks now <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like I but it. I, I think that's kind of normal that's cool you know we, yeah. we got our friendship this way other people maybe have got it different ways but yeah I, I think that's cool and then i've got friends that you know i'm part of vistid and all these different organizations it's like i don't ever want to sell them <laughs> yeah. i want to be their friend you know and again it's like it's tough it's like no 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 you know we, we yeah okay fine I'll, I'll help you out with this little thing <laughs> but no <Yeah>. more <laughs> you know so and, and it doesn't have to be icky right yeah like, yeah yeah you know, I, I you know there's there's the whole glenn gary glenn ross always be closing I've, I've always said it's always be useful like if you yeah. can help somebody you do it and you do it because it's the right thing you don't do it because you're going to get something out of it but mm. like sales is good karma man like you do enough good stuff and like it's going to find its way back to you and your organization. Well, it's no different than thought leadership, right? You know, if, if you've seen any of our presentations, it's not a sales pitch. Yeah. It, it is like, hey, here are the four things that you need to know to run your business, your marketing agency 10 times better. Here are the metrics you need. Here, here's how you build the metrics. Here's yeah. how you create that forecast to do it. And, and, the, and the cool thing about it is we've got folks that have listened to us talk and and they they do really well with it. that's all they needed yeah. and it was for free <laughs> and they built a very successful agency because of it and, and those are the folks that every time we're in new york hey give us a call i want to take you out for dinner you know hey, well, let's go to a new york game you know yeah. nick game or something like that it's like yeah that's cool and, and and there's never it's never a weird deal right you know it's not weird you know hey you never were a client but you became a friend and we helped you out that's great that's good and then, then you get then you get the 90 percent that can't do it you know in your point and then they may reach out to you or somebody else but again that's that's the whole idea at least in my opinion i totally agree well, totally. i think the other part that was mentioned earlier is, is being patient with it right so like how many times have you been at a a bar or a house party or something like that and you're just there to watch the super bowl and someone you're having a conversation with a random dad or a random male and how long is it before they ask you what you do right it's usually yeah. like the second or third question and again you don't approach that as a sales you're just like oh yeah i i help small businesses with their um with their websites or whatever whatever it is like just plant that seed so okay know they might ask you follow-up questions they don't ask you follow-up questions you move on but then someday they're like oh you know i'm starting a small business maybe i need help with the website maybe i should call that guy i met at the the part of the super bowl party a couple months yeah. ago you know and so i think that that's the thing with the way i handle it is i'm just planting the seed i don't bring it up like it's oh i'm trying to sell them right away i'm just like hey yeah i I do a small business consulting financial consulting you know and sometimes if they're a small business owner they're going to ask me a lot more questions if they're not they're just gonna move on and it's it's yeah. it's totally cool so um yeah, all right so we're, we're at our fun part sorry oh, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm just no i was just gonna say, say I, don't, I don't think i'm gonna say anything that's gender inappropriate but we all know other men and they they're very bad at uncomfortable silence and yep. the question, what do you do, comes up because they run out of things to talk about. Exactly. Sure. Sure. You can only really talk about the last play of the game for so long, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> eventually right. it comes up. Right. <laughs> awesome. So we've reached the show where we get to talk about the fun stuff. So I know we didn't do it on the actual show here, but we did pre-show about um, Halloween and haunted houses quite a bit here. So yes. I want to go down that down that path because it is one of my uh, – my favorite topics. And so um, we're going to talk about scary movies. Um, so what I'm going to have you guys do is rank what level of scary movie you can handle. So 10 would be like extreme Ooh. slasher. Like it's the highest level. I think Terrifier 3 just came out, something like that. One would be like mm -hmm. Hocus Pocus, right? That's all I can handle. So what for both of you guys, Ooh. horror movie can you handle watching and do you actually enjoy watching it at that level? So uh, Adam, we'll, we'll start with you. Hmm. Um, I, I have not seen any of the Terrifier movies, but I've seen the clips and I can tell you that is easily not even a 10. That's like a 20 for me. Like I can't, <laughs> like I can do fake zombie gore, that's fine. but when I feel like I'm watching a snuff film, like I'm out, like oh. it, it feels too real. Like I, I can't do it. Um, and I'm trying to, you know, and then, you know, you've got like Beetlejuice. That's a yeah. one. Beetlejuice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can do that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, my favorite all time still remains to this day is Halloween. Okay. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've, there's a, there's a podcast about the history of the first movie that I love. Great stories about when they, when they showed it to pilot audiences. They originally showed it and it had no soundtrack. And the audiences walked out laughing because it was just like a, a guy in a white mask chasing people and no one was afraid. When they showed it with the score, people walked out terrified 
Is that right? I just, I just love how music yeah. and sound can trigger the fear in those movies. And I think when you watch it and you notice it, it's such an it's almost another character in that movie. But yeah, I think no, even, even those movies, when you look back, you think, why was I scared watching that? Movie? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. at the time you're like, oh, my gosh. But now it's like, huh. you know, because it, everything's getting better and better and better, more real and real and real. And yeah. just to your point, you know, it's not real when there's no music. When there is music, it becomes real. And no different than God, right? There's almost God's no the blood. Way. There's yeah. no blood in the first movie, except for the the opening scene when he's a kid and you just happen to see the knife at the true, end. True. Yeah, yeah. There's no blood. So, like, what do you, you, you? It's it's terrifying that this person is just chasing you. You're running. They're walking. You're not getting away. <laughs> and the creepy music is is following you through the whole movie. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> So did you like the new, the newer movies with uh, like the, the same, the same one with like Jamie Lee in it? I thought those yeah, were really well done I, too. I actually did. I did. I mean, you know, were they perfect? No, but I, I did, you know, I, I liked the idea that they said, okay, everything else, remove it from canon mm -hmm. and let's pick it up as a fresh sequel to the original mm -hmm. and look at all the time that's changed and what's happened. I, I love that they did that. Um, I, I thought it was pretty well done. Me too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Jody, what's, what's your, what's your scare level? Oh, you know, I don't have a scare level, to be honest with you. I, I just love watching really anything. I mean, I, it, you know, even, even the, the ones that go beyond, it's like, I'll watch it. But if, if it's obviously if it's real, I'm not watching it. Yeah, but if, yeah, it, yeah. if it's, if it's the demonic stuff that kind of gets to me a little bit, you know, you, you, cause you know, it's, it could be real, Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, slasher movies aren't going to be real. So it's like, oh, those are fun. Just watching yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, that's good. But, but a story I've got with, with, with for you is um, scream. I love the scream series. Just love it. And that's not real, obviously you, know, you, you, you can, you can definitely, well, hopefully you can tell it's not real, but uh, a story about that is that, so we, you know, had two little kids that I think they were probably five and six at the time when the first uh, scream came out and um you know they they just happened to fall asleep well no no they, they happened to wake up early hop on the couch and turn their favorite cartoons on right and so they're they're both sitting there watching cartoons and uh so we you know my wife and i came out of the bedroom and and uh, realized quickly that it wasn't a cartoon they're watching oh, it was wow. Scream. <laughs> oh wow so they're both huddled together holding each other <laughs> watching scream <laughs> and and it was uh, kind of funny because today that is by far their most favorite uh, yeah. you know, slasher movie ever is, is a Scream series. You know, it's like, hey, Scream's coming out. Want to go watch it, Dad? I'm like, let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> core memory. It's a core memory. Yeah, core memory. <laughs> Hilarious. Oh, yeah. How bad appearance we thought we were at the time. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Our kids have been watching this for an hour because <laughs> we just didn't get up in time. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so Scream Scream's by far my favorite. Um there's a lot of great ones. Halloween, Friday the 13th, all those are, are fun to watch. Even now going back, when, when, when you're flipping channels, they, they pop on. It's like, yeah, for some reason it stays on for a longer period of time. But the, the one that really scared the living bejesus out of me, actually, and this, this will date me a little bit, it's Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, but when yeah. that came out, I was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, am I going to be able to fall asleep? <laughs> it was like, Johnny Depp's film debut. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, so so I, I love I love that kind of thing, which kind of gets to what we were talking about before going to Halloween and going to different haunted houses and, and all that kind of stuff. That's that's a lot of fun because it, it, it being scared a little. At least I think being scared is just fun. Um, could be wrong, but you know my, my wife doesn't agree with that sentiment. But, <laughs> but uh, my wife is not in on it. My son is he'll participate because he li he just likes to be around us. And my daughter is all in on it. So that's her. She loves horror movies. It's her favorite time of year. She the the new one with Nicolas Cage, the Long Legs. She's like, we have to go see that in the theater. And we went and saw oh, cool. it. So like it was it was really fun and really good movie. But I I'm definitely more of like. If there's too much gore, like the terrifiers, like I'm kinda out. I don't like I don't like just to be like grossed out the entire movie. So like, like I, yeah. I usually don't go that high on it. Like that would be a ten to me as those that type of movies. Or even like the Saw. <clears throat> like I don't think I've ever seen even oh, seen those the are good. It's, it's oh, you don't like the Saw movie. <laughs> I mean I would. I've never just seen them. But yeah, I so I it's something my daughter and I connect on, so it's fun for she and I to watch uh horror movies together. And um yeah, it's it's definitely one of my uh 
one of my favorite things. And we did we did take my son to see a talk to me. I don't know if you guys saw that one where they had like the little like hand that was kind of like a Ouija board mm-hmm. and it possessed the person that was holding it. And uh, we went and talked, took my son and daughter oh, yeah. to that one. They were the only kids in the entire theater. And my daughter's 16 and my son's <laughs> or 17. My daughter's son's 15. It's not like they're kids, but that time they were a little younger. And that one was pretty gruesome. Yeah. And they were like, I think my son had his hat and hood down for almost the entire movie. Like it was pretty, <laughs> it was pretty, oh, pretty wow. rough. But <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> So horror movies good, are my <laughs> Awesome. Well, I thought this was a this was a great episode. Um, we ended on obviously one of my favorite topics. We actually started on one of my favorite topics. I know that um, this is what all of our clients are asking us. A lot of the companies are really thinking about is how to um how to fill those gaps because I think a lot of people are hoping 2025 is going to be a going to be a big year, but it's not going to happen unintentionally. Like you need to make sure you're taking those steps to make it happen. So definitely appreciate all your knowledge on this, Adam. And this was a this is a fun episode. Yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. This was great. Yeah, so how do people get a hold of you, Adam? <clears throat> oh, get a hold of me? Yeah, if they um, need to get a hold of you for whatever reason. L- LinkedIn for sure, Adam Kurzawa, uh, Infinum. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> not Infinum. And, and, and they can email me as well. It's just adam.kurzawa, my last name. I'm sure maybe it'll be in the show notes, um, at infinum.com. Happy to talk biz dev. Always happy to talk new projects. There you go. Um, you, know, you know where to find me. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you. Enjoy this podcast? Visit our website, summitcpa.net, to get more tips and strategy for achieving business success. We're here to be a resource in this ever-changing industry.